One of the first things I see in Joe is a vulnerability, an authenticity, a person who cares deeply. I think Joe's story is, is a good one in terms of the idea that you can have an impact, you can enlarge your, your universe. You know, he has a long history of doing the right thing and learning as much as he possibly can, even in his 80s now. Call me an all-American boy. I'm not all-American at all. I'm, I'm a former refugee, uh, you know, uh, who's been successful and who wants to give back. Uh, that's all I, I can ever do. Well, I am a Holocaust survivor. Chances were of it that I would, I would have never made it had it not been for my father and mother. My father was a prominent physician in Vienna, Austria, and the Nazis came in and uh, put him in concentration camp. And my mother, somehow or other, the Germans were not above bribery. She managed to get him out. My father told me this, that she spoke six languages fluently. Her native Polish, Russian, German, French, Spanish, and English. This was 1938. The Germans took over Austria, and we went to France. And there we encountered the Vichy French, which were pro-German. And they said to my parents, you can't leave. My little brother, who was six and I was eight, we were put on a ship sponsored by a Unitarian minister and his wife with 24 other children. And we came to America by ourselves. We said goodbye to my mother, and we never saw her again alive because she died in France. My father climbed the Pyrenees Mountains at the age of around 52 and came to America and established a medical practice for 21 years. And I miss my mother, like any young boy would miss his mother. It was a challenge for him to find his, his place, I believe, in this country, and also starting school as an, as an eight-year-old in the U.S., um, learning English at the age of eight after having come to this country. So he, he had a different perspective, I think, than many students who had grown up in the U.S. But I think that experience, the resilience, the perseverance, the courage that it took as a child to come to a country and not even be speaking the language and to come without either of your parents and to ultimately only be reunited with one of your parents caused Joe to have a very strong bond, not only with his brother, but a strong commitment that in his new country, Joe was gonna do everything he could to make a difference. Joe's entire life story is about what's the difference I'm going to make? How am I going to make a positive contribution? Joe Strasser came to Syracuse at a difficult time in his life and I believe a difficult time in the country. He had been told by his family that he should be a doctor and his father and brother were both doctors at the time. My goal in life was to be a doctor like my father or a lawyer. He called them ambulance chasers, but he, that was his secondary choice for me. I left Syracuse University as a second lieutenant, went on active duty during the Korean conflict. I'm a graduate of the United States Army Finance School, also, of course, Syracuse University with two degrees. I was sent overseas to Germany of all places. The Army made the right decision because I was, I was able to speak German at the time. Joe's fundamental goal, what he wants more than anything else, is to make a difference. Why does he want that? Because he, he has seen up close, front and personal, the difference that his father made as a physician, the difference that his brother made as a physician, and Joe's engagement in public service was how he could take things, how he could engage others, how he could think more collectively and holistically about getting people involved. As a Holocaust survivor, he doesn't ever see himself as a victim, but a victor. And he often says that this country gave him a life that was taken away from him. 
I felt like we have to serve our country. America was good to me. It opened up the doors to an eight-year-old refugee who was homeless, and I wanted to give back. And that's probably where I came into my philanthropic area. We're here for a purpose, and my purpose was to give back. Career-wise, I did that. I would speak to Joe quite often uh, on matters that were pending before the council that had any kind of fiscal impact and, on the city. And uh, if I did not reach out to him and he had something to say about it, he didn't hesitate to reach out to me. So uh, in many ways, I, I kind of feel like that you know he, he was a mentor to me. Joe goes all in. He studies, he thinks about it, he'll tell you what he thinks. He's a very authentic person. But at the same time, Joe has a passion and a humility for how to make a difference in the lives of others that reflects, I think, a great lesson for all of us. The, the biggest project that I ever did at the Maxwell School at Syracuse University was to convert the, what they call the media room, to convert it into the Dr. Paul and Natalie Strasser legacy room to honor my parents. You know, I, I wouldn't be here, obviously, if my parents hadn't brought me here. They kept me alive. In honoring my parents and putting them into what I call the Hall of Fame, this is a room that is the size of two large classrooms and has a portrait of my mother and my father and in between the Horizon Award that I received. And I'm sitting right in between my mother and my father. And no matter what happens, I'm with them and they're with me. I think Joe's greatest legacy is going to be both what he did as a career, the fact that he spent you know, nearly a 40-year career in municipal government as a public servant, as a person trying to make change in communities, but then leveraged his personal resources to then move from profession to philanthropist. I was told as a child that you put your money where your mouth is, and Joe is a man that does that. He lives a very simple, almost austere life, but takes his fortune and gives it to people and places he thinks are deserving and worthy of his support. I, I've, I've never had a family. Uh, of my own. My family has been my pets. You know, we have no kill in Jacksonville and surrounding communities. And no kill means that 90% of the animals that enter the uh, shelters leave the shelters alive. Of course, you know, we have buildings with Joseph A. Strasser's name on it that will live for a long time after all of us are gone but it's those people that he touches every day that are touched in those buildings. You know, that, the growth that has resulted from Joseph's support throughout the years is now we have 140 employees and we're seeing over 100,000 patients a year and we never turn anybody away because they can't afford our services. So it's exciting because we have actually become the pet safety net hospital for Northeast Florida and we help people whose pets are in need no matter what the case. The other thing was Tree Hill Nature Center. I was asked to be the sponsor of the Butterfly Festival back in 2007, the title sponsor. When I went out there and I saw these little children with their mamas and daddies, I said, hey, wait a minute. He was instrumental in providing matching funds to build the boardwalk at the Nature Center, which increased our capacity and allowed us to go from seeing 40 to 60 students a day to 200, 225, which was the saving grace for the center. We see it all the time as I have students that come in that have never been outside before. And the only place they've been is school and where they live, school where they live, and where they live is not surrounded with wild habitat. It's just not. So, Allowing us to go from 50, 60 students to 200, that story continues year after year and day after day on the students that come from Title I schools that 
don't get out to see this kind of thing. It's crime prevention. You know, the first responders, the police and fire, they respond to incidents when things go wrong, murders, fires. What we do here, we prevent things. If you get to these children when they're young, then you can solve a lot of problems. They've seen nature, they've seen it at best. How many of kids from some of the poor neighborhoods, for example, have ever been out and seen trees and shrubbery and trails? They've never been exposed to that. I think this is a marvelous thing that we are doing. Whether it's at a Syracuse University or Tree Hill or at First Coast No More Homeless Pets or the dozens of other organizations that Joseph A. Strasser has helped throughout the years, I think that it's going to be the ongoing support that those organizations can provide to the community that are really in the spirit of Joseph. I mean, there's so many people that Joseph Strasser has helped individually, and I think that really the organizations that he supports will just continue that legacy forever and ever. I must be here. I'm 86 years old. There must be a purpose in my lifetime. And the fact that I'm a Holocaust survivor is proof of the pudding that we need to do something in the immigration area. We need to, America was built on immigrants. Everybody, everybody here in one, one time or another was an immigrant. I'm an immigrant and I'm proud to have been an American citizen now for 73 years.